Hello, friends, and welcome to our streaming services. If you're with us on YouTube or Facebook, go ahead and subscribe to get notifications when we have new videos. If you're with us on Zoom, say hello in the chat. We'd love to say hello back to you. Uh, and if this is your first time here, go sign our guest book at ooklafuu.org slash guest. Today's sermon is Ableism with UUCOC President Beth Furry. All right, y'all, want to see some Workday Wednesday progress? Show us some pictures, Skype. Oh, such a great job, right? Thank you to everybody who's been joining Workday Wednesdays. Um, if you haven't yet, lots of time to do it. Just show up any Wednesday between 4 and 8 o'clock. They will feed you. It'll be great. You can spruce up our campus with your friends. So, yeah, if you know that you're going to be there, contact Rebecca, and she can find something that's tailor fit to you. Otherwise, just show up. There's always stuff to do. All right, let's talk about reopening. Um, assuming that everything continues to go as well as it has been, we are planning our in-gathering slash reopening potluck, because you know you miss your potlucks, um, for September 26th. So you know that there's some work involved in getting all that going. If you'd like to join our task force to make sure that when we all get back together, we have an amazing fun event, then please do contact Renee at vice-president at oakcliffuu.org. If you join, I bet she'll give you some cookies or something or something. I don't know. She'd be really excited to have you, though. <laughs> All right. But are you just too excited to wait till September? You wish that you could get together sooner? Well, good news. A few of us are gathering on Sundays in Hope Chapel, I believe, um, but on campus to watch the service and join and talk back together in person. We are asking that if you are interested in doing this, that you be vaccinated and an adult because kids can't get vaccinated. And so, yeah, if you miss your friends and you miss joining together in person and you are vaccinated and you are comfortable and you are ready, Join us on Sundays at church to watch and join together. Another way that you can do all of that, not in person, but with your church family, if you are feeling very social, we have social hour every Friday at 9 p.m. on Zoom. And don't forget that on Sundays, we also have talk back after the service, which is amazing. Everybody loves talk back, right? You don't have to talk. You can just listen, but you will get something out of it every single time. And we have adult RE at one o'clock every Sunday as well. So lots of fun stuff to do. All right, y'all. Guess what? We have a member anniversary. Oh my gosh. So fun, right? All right. You ready? You ready? Scott's going to queue it up, queue up the picture. Happy UUCOC anniversary to Tommy Kenny. All right. Happy anniversary to you and to everybody else. Oh, and yourself. <laughs> happy Sunday. Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Oak Cliff. Thank you for having the curiosity and the courage to join us. We welcome you, whoever you are. Whatever spiritual tradition, gender, age, race, sexual orientation, or background you may bring to our community, we hope you will find here comfort, connection, challenge, respect, and above all, love. May the light we now kindle inspire us to use our powers to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to bless and not to curse, to serve you a spirit of love, compassion, and forgiveness. Que esta luz que ahora encendemos nos inspire a usar nuestros dones y poderes para sanar y no para herir, para ayudar y no para impedir, para bendecir y no para maldecir, para servirte a ti, espíritu de amor, Compassion, y perdón. Mattering by Mark Hicks My father asked if I'm gay. I asked, does it matter? He said, no, not really. I said, yes. He said, get out of my life. I guess it mattered. 
My friend asked why I talk about race so much. I asked, does it matter? He said, no, not really. I told him, yes. He said, you need to get that chip off your shoulder. I guess it mattered. My neighbor asked why I put that ramp up to my front door. I said, does it matter? He said, no, not really. I told him because it made my life easier. He said, is there a way to make it less obvious? I guess it mattered. A member of my church asked why I like gospel music. I asked, does it matter? She said, no, not really. I told her that it connects me to my Southern Christian childhood. She said, I think you're in denial about your oppression. I guess it mattered. My God asked me, do you love yourself? I said, does it matter? She said, yes. I said, how can I love myself? I am gay, Latino, disabled, and a Christian in a hostile climate. She said, that is the way I made you. Nothing will ever matter again. Because we love one another, we honor each individual's spiritual journey. We celebrate life's abundance and service to each other, our community, and the world. We connect with each other in love, respect, and acceptance. Thus do we covenant together. And now in Spanish. ¿Por qué nos amamos uno al otro? Honramos el viaje espiritual de cada individuo. Celebramos la abundancia de la vida en el servicio a entre sí, nuestra comunidad y el mundo. Ponemos en contacto a unos con otros en el amor, respeto y aceptación, así que hacemos pacto. We share our sorrow with one another, believing that a sorrow shared is a sorrow halved. Today, we also hold in our hearts the shared grief of our hurting planet. At this time, we invite you to publicly post your sorrows and prayer requests to our Zoom chat or send those to our Facebook Messenger. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe. 
breathe in. I breathe in peace when I breathe out. I breathe out love when I breathe in. I breathe in peace when I breathe out. I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. We also share our joys with one another, believing that a shared joy is a joy doubled. Today, we take special time to celebrate our connection to all life everywhere. Please share your joys publicly in the Zoom chat or send those to our Facebook Messenger or speak those aloud. When I signed up to do this sermon, I didn't even realize that July was Disability Pride Month. I just knew there were things within the world of systemic ableism that a vast majority of people are completely unaware of. In fact, before these past two weeks, I fully intended to discuss the language that needs to change and how dismantling a white supremacy paradigm will support the needs of the disabled in a way the ADA never could. Through a series of strange events, I realized my sermon changed. I knew at some point my truth would need to be more fully explored, but I have honestly been delaying it for several reasons. Sure, some of that was a reaction to the trauma from which I needed to heal. But it was also that I was waiting for the signs I needed to know it was time. Three things happened to me well, to me that made me realize that this was that time. The timing of the sermon with Disability Pride Month, the signs in society that it was time for us all to start speaking our truth to help move things forward, the higher cost of living that came with COVID, and a letter I received. When I left Iowa and the abuses, I pointedly told them I would not release any of the knowledge I had unless I heard from someone again who was party to so much of the trouble. I received a letter not long ago from one of the companies where it began demanding money that I owed them. I took their unmitigated galt in demanding to pay them as a final sign that I needed to start being loud again. And so my message changed. And soon, too, probably will my life. 
Looking back on my life, I believe this is where I was headed from early childhood, long before I became physically disabled myself. At the age of seven, my grandfather visited me the night after his death to tell me I had a hard journey ahead, but would change many lives. At nine, I was published for the first time when the Association for Retarded Children, now called ARC, held a contest on why it was important to support those with differences. I was always supporting the underdog to the point where my campfire leaders called me Little Mother. It feels like I got caught in some big cosmic setup. But then again, I may very well have signed up for this simply so I could be instrumental in helping the world shift at this very time in history. I began getting seriously involved in activism when my child was diagnosed with autism and we were told he would need to be institutionalized as an adult. I owe a debt of gratitude to those same people at ARC who moved heaven and earth to do everything they could to ensure he had a productive life. As most of you know, he is now a surgical tech. I fought many battles against ableism as he grew up. I marched into classrooms and offices demanding he be given the same opportunities. And I dealt with mental health issues that plagued him. But it wasn't until after my children were grown and gone that I really began to see the dark web of it, disabilities, as I call it. Although the issues began with a single incident in which I reported someone for violence against a black friend, it didn't get bad until I tried to start a residence association to address problems within the complex I moved to. It was taken over by a few residents who were actively participating in a fraud scheme run by management. A couple of us fought back, only to be gaslighted. At one point, I was taking antibiotics when I started having blackouts and could remember bits and pieces of being sexually assaulted by a neighbor. I opened the tablets, only to discover they'd been replaced by tiny tablets. So I sent them to the pharmacy with a nurse who had came back to tell me they were illegal drugs of an unknown type. I met the same nurse later and she said, do you remember me? I did, but I told her I didn't, just in case. Soon funeral music was piped through the walls of my apartment. I'm amazed at the expense these people went to to cover up their crimes. You'd think they'd have considered offering me a cut at some point rather than continue the gaslighting. But as I discovered several times, criminals are not generally the sharpest tools in the shed. The turning point came one night when I had had enough and went to a hotel for the night. I knew I was being followed, but I needed a night of quiet. I was able to ignore most of the talking outside the door, but I learned a few things from it. I'm not sure they ever figured out how sharp my hearing is either. The next morning, I went into the lobby for breakfast. The manager was there standing to the side, and the clerk was in front of the computer. He looked at me, then the door, went to the window, and made a Morse code message from the blinds. Thank you, campfire girls. I knew I was in trouble then. I also knew I could, couldn't could just call somebody and tell them this wild ass story. I heard a voice in my head tell me to fake being suicidal. The clerk was frantically typing away at the computer when I dialed 911. I told the person on the other end my location and that I was suicidal. When I gave her my personal information, she became confused and said, according to the records, I don't exist. I verbally said, that's strange because I do exist. While making direct eye contact with the clerk who was now sweating profusely. He started tapping away again frantically and the woman on the other end said, hey, that's strange. You just showed up. I glared at the clerk and told her, yes, that's quite interesting. Once I got to the hospital, I told the intake person the truth 
of what happened and that I was not suicidal or homicidal. He questioned that I might have been delusional, but couldn't keep me. So he arranged a taxi to take me to another agency for help. I told him that my guess is you will discover that taxi will be diverted to another location. He just scoffed and left. When he came back soon and told me the driver had called, questioning why the ride had been changed to a location in the middle of the woods. The strange events didn't stop there, but they became so obsessed with gaslighting me, they started making some huge mistakes that caused others to see. I was not imagining what was going on. Even if I was delusional, I would have been telling the truth and they should have believed me. But that isn't what's important. I started to see the abuses taking place in the system, not just against myself, but they were also using money meant for patient therapy to fill their own pockets. They were coercing people into assigning a private agency to handle their money. And that agency was using some very creative accounting. I managed to extract myself through a psychologist who called the FBI on my behalf when my identity was stolen and another who understood that I was an empath and psychic and found a way to encourage those gifts. In the end, that long period of terror turned out to be a gift. I quit being a victim and became self-sufficient. I stopped taking medications the doctors insisted on unless there was a valid reason for doing so. And I did the research first. I quit using a wheelchair and walker on a daily basis and ultimately became healthier. I let go of everything that no longer served me and was stunning my growth as a human being. I will forever be grateful for those lessons, no matter how hard they were. As a result of this new series of synchronicities, I have decided to move forward and come out of the disability closet. I will be actively looking for ways in which to tell my story and help other people move forward and stand up for themselves. I'm not interested in becoming wealthy for myself, although the occasional steak and meal out would be not. I am looking for ways in which I can bring the money needed to find land and build the community I have long wanted to create. I cannot step away from this in an environment that is creating more disability in the wake of COVID. Also, I lost friends in a devastating fire when a public housing complex was mismanaged and neglected. I'm also not interested in punishing individuals for their actions. In the end, the Medicaid system in Iowa was investigated and several agencies were shut down. The Des Moines Register won a Pulitzer Prize for their story on the investigation. Karma has taken care of many of the people and lost jobs. Those who were residents were moved to safer locations. As we moved into the new energy and the secrets hidden become known, the rest will fall away. I am interested in doing what I can to help dismantle a system that allowed all of this to occur in the first place. At the end of the day, the mental health system is no different than any other government system that's been allowed to privatize. You have good people in there, but most are too afraid to be whistleblowers because there are repercussions for doing so, and usually the job is needed to feed their families. If we take away that option, many of the issues can be resolved. In the end, I believe my work will reach far beyond the campus of this church. But here, and the UU denomination at large, widening the circle of concern work will help many of us in the marginalized communities begin to heal and find our voices so we can go out and change the world. Thank you for your time. I've got peace like a river. I've got In my soul, I 
got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Let there be an offering to sustain and strengthen this place which is sacred to so many of us, a community of memory and hope. For we are now the keepers of the dream. To make an offering or your pledge, please go to oakcliffuu.org slash donate and follow the links. Together we share, and from this we live. De ti o recibo, a ti te doy, así compartimos y vivimos hoy. You Matter by Matthew Rosen. You matter. There is no one like you, never will be again. From the birth of the earth to its outermost end. You, an eager shout, a sacred yes that moves your flesh, your bone, your breath. You, she, he, z, they, you are whole and okay, gracefully teaching your truth and your way. You cannot be forgotten, we cherish you so. Your voice and your hands can do more than you know. You see old things anew, you turn them and test them, your wonder exhausts our old words to express them. You speak and lay bare all you dig up and hold, aloft from the dust of conventions grown cold. You 
upend every rock and pursue every glimmer and give new name to each sparkle and shimmer. You chart out new paths, go beyond our horizons, new friendships, new stories, your hope always rising. You welcome and wanted, whatever your skin, wherever the neighborhood you were born in. You play across fences that keep us divided. Old walls become weak where your love is ignited. You call us to kindness and questions, reminding the life of our living is found in the finding. You, there is no one like you, never will be again. From the birth of the earth to its outermost end, you matter, you do. We'll keep learning with you. Now stand on our shoulders, see what you can do. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And now in Spanish. Extinguimos esta llama, pero no la luz de la verdad, el calor de comunidad, o el fuego de nuestro compromiso. Estos los llevaremos en el corazón hasta que estemos juntos otra vez. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, oh, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, oh, let it shine. Building up a world, I'm gonna let it shine, oh, building up a world, I'm gonna let it shine. Building up a world, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, oh, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. 